Have you seen this pencil over Pinterest? Well, you're in luck. We're sewing our own version today. Introducing the unisex boxer pajama pants. Yes, it is unisex. It's for both men and women. The legs are roomy. We have pockets. The waist is elasticated, which means that you're going to be able to make them high-waisted or low-waisted. Had I cinched the waist a bit more, this is the way it would have looked. And if I wear them low-waisted, this is the way they look. The signature of this pants is, of course, the boxer short front fly detail. This is a real fly, by the way. And lastly, we have ankle panels ornated with piping. Let's talk about the difficulty for a second. So because of the fly, this project is intermediate, I think. If you want to make it simpler, you can skip the fly. So if I take the pattern, I trace a line going from here to here. And this is going to be my new cutting line with the seam allowance already included. Cut your fabric this way for both legs, the right and the left and then unite those front legs at the center seam before uniting those front legs to the back legs. Second thing you can do is skip the ankle panel. My boyfriend finds that the ankle panels make the project a little bit feminine, so if you want to sew for a guy, maybe you skip the panels right away and remember that you have to lengthen the legs to compensate for the missing length of the ankle panel. Last thing you can do is skip the pockets. They're not very hard though. Let's talk about the fabric for a second. So you want to take some light woven mid-weight fabric with or without stretch. For the warmer seasons, you can take cotton lawn, Oxford, poplin, gingham, double gauze linen. The fabric I took in this tutorial is Oxford fabric. And for the colder months, flannel will be great, a light gabardine as well. And you can also make them in light sweatshirt fabric. I know that sweatshirt is a knit fabric, but I still think it will look nice. It's gonna have some sweatpants look to it though. You could also take some velvet or minky. Other supplies are interfacing, two buttons, piping, and a vanishing ink pen really handy for this project. Let's talk about sizing now. Because the pattern is unisex, it is important that you use the measurement charts that I provide to pick your size. So take your waist and your hip measurements and find to which size they correspond in the measurement chart. The most critical measurement here is the hips, of course, uh, since the waist, as we saw it, is adjustable. Now, what do you do if you're sewing for someone else? Well, go to the chart here and have a look at these two rows. They should help. And finally, Let's sew. All right, so let me show you the pieces of the pattern. Let's take the front leg. Make sure to transfer the notches. I have shortened the legs to fit my height since it's a design for men, the legs are quite long. So take your inseam measurements, remembering that there is an extra ankle part that is included in the inseam measurements of the pants. Looking at the fly, you actually have two sides in one pattern piece, the left and the right sides of the fly. So if I leave the fly whole as it is, this is the right leg, and then you'll cut the left side a bit differently, so you can just fold the paper and you'll have the left leg. In the end, the right fly will come in front of the left. It's not really important to remember, but I'll guide you anyways. Here we have a bit of interfacing that you're going to stick on the right fly. As you can see, I have stuck interfacing on both flies, the right and the left part. That's just because I got confused. But it doesn't hurt at all. The reason we're adding interfacing here is to reinforce the area where we're going to have buttons. So it's always good to reinforce the area where the buttons are going to be sewed, as well as where the button holes will be sewed. Now, the reason why it looks like I sewed some things already here is because I made a mistake when cutting the left fly. I cut the fabric on the light line here instead of cutting it on the thicker one. So it looks tinkered, but please don't pay attention. Hopefully my making this mistake is going to prevent you from doing it yourself. Here are the back of the legs. Again, they're shorter. I have transferred the notches. The pocket bags are here, cut four times. The ankle panels that I am going to accessorize with piping. Now, look, the grain line is different compared to the legs, and it's because I made this design with a striped fabric in mind. My idea is to have the stripes run vertically for the legs and then horizontally for this ankle panel. Finally, we have this part. It's an elastic guide for the size that I'm cutting. It's the smallest size. 
not gonna pay attention to this part. I'm just gonna put the elastic band around my belly uh, to check how long I want it and I'm gonna cut from there and I'm gonna have it extra large because that's how I like my pajamas. All right, let's go on and take care of the flies. We're gonna take the right fly first and we're gonna finish the edges using the overlocker. Using the overlocker and angles is tricky. I'm gonna go till the tip of the angle. I just pivot my fabric. And when you get to the other angle, you fold the fabric to get a straight line. This is the result on the right fly. Then I stay with my right fly. I'm gonna make some markings two centimeters from this edge. And then here another line. And then here another line again. I'm going to fold right sides together. And I sew on this line here that I am tracing. Notice exactly where the line stops. And I sew. All right, now I'm gonna take care of the left fly. I'm gonna finish the edges as well. Once this is done, I'm gonna transfer some markings, a line again, two centimeters from the edge, and then another one. And now I'm going to fold. And I top stitch. Now we'll sew the crotch. Okay, this bit on the right fly, I'm gonna fold and pin out of the way. I lay the two front legs, right sides touching.
let me grab the pattern to show you the seams that we'll do. We're sewing this line here and you want to pay attention to where it stops, which is the point here. Observe that it's running a bit diagonally from the edge. Okay, I pin, I sew. There we go. Now I turn the right fly inside out. fold this bit here. And I fold the edge against the line. I did a lot of pinning and unpinning here. You want to fold the fly once more. Now I'm going to baste the fly in place. It's going to help me for the next steps. Alright, let's move on to the buttons. I use the pattern to draw the button placement. You want to do it on the right side of the fabric. Um, this is not a great success. The button here, it, it, this one is smaller than the other. That's why I really like like modern sewing machines because they have automatic buttonhole functions and mine is too old, it doesn't. This is really a feature that is really nice. I recommend to um, check that it's there on whatever new sewing machine that you want to buy. Anyways, I'm going to iron to make the ink vanish. Now, I'm going to top stitch along this edge the spot where the seam stops is precisely this one, where the two sides of the fly part ways. So here's the result. I pinned the two flies in place. I trace my seams and I sew on top. Then I remove the basting stitches. And I erase my markings. Finally, I'll top stitch the crotch seam. I'm gonna sew like seven millimeters the width of my presser foot.
Now, before you continue, here is something that you can do that I didn't do, but I realized it might have been nice. You can sew here um, the fly, the two sides of the fly together here on this line on eight centimeters. It's just gonna help just a tiny bit for later, nothing major, but it does help. I'm gonna finish the edges I place the pockets on the front, right side touching. Use the notches to place them correctly, it's all on the pattern. Same for the back. I sew. And I stay stitch. I'm going to sew the center back seam this time. And I finish the edges. Now I'm going to unite the front and the back of the legs. I lay the front and the back right side touching. I'm going to sew the two layers all around except for the waist, of course, and for the leg openings. For the seam that is in between the legs, I finish the edges after I've done my seam. Now the pocket opening being currently too broad, I'm going to reduce it. It's all on the pattern if you want the measurements of this opening. Done. All right, I'm going to take care of the waist. So the first thing I did is trace a line eight centimeters from the edge. Again, it's all in the pattern. Notice that the pants are laid with the front visible, wrong side of the fabric visible as well. Then I flatten the pockets and their seam allowance towards the front. I'm going to make a little hem using the width of the overlocker seam. Whatever hem you're doing, make sure that the waist channel is big enough for your elastic bond. I pin. On the back, I put a good bunch of pins to mark where I need to stop the seam. Uh, indeed, you need to have an opening to insert the elastic. So I'm going to leave like a 10 centimeter opening. This is what I get with the opening at the back. So here you can see that this part at the front is moving a little bit. It's because I didn't I didn't sew it as I recommended that you do. But if you didn't, you'll see it's no big deal at all. Time to add the elastic. I don't have a safety pin with me right now to pull my elastic through. So I'll make do with what I have. I just took a buttonhole presser for it. I laid the two ends flat against one another. I sew, I close the opening. All right, this is day two of filming. Now it's time to add the ankle panels. So again, when I designed these pants, I had a stripe fabric in mind with the stripes of the legs running vertically and the panels horizontally with piping in between. I didn't take a stripe fabric here because it would have made the sewing steps difficult to see. Better a solid and a light color. 
So I'm going to take a first ankle panel, fold right sides together, open the seam allowance and press down, fold in half, finish the edges. Now let's add the piping to this ankle panel. I'm going to pin against the inner leg seam and when I pin I leave like one two centimeter extra beyond the seam. I pin the piping all around and once you're on the other end you leave again like two centimeters extra and you cut. I take my seam ripper, I open the piping on one end I cut off the cord inside, I make a small hem, I pin this part open, I pin the other end on top. And I close the first end. Then I take my zipper foot and I pin the piping. You can take a piping presser foot, of course. I just don't have one. Now I'm going to insert the panels at the ankles. Be careful, there is a direction. Go back to the pattern if you're unsure. The front leg is narrower than the back, so pay close attention to the notches. They're gonna orient you. Now I'm going to top stitch. So let me pause here and show you the result before you do anything because it's a matter of taste. See the leg on the right is top stitched. If you don't like the look with top stitching, then you can just skip this part. Personally, I top stitched and then I decided I didn't like it that much, so I removed the seams. All right, I'm going to add the buttons, but first I'm going to cut my button holes. And finally, I'm going to top stitch the waistband. So you could choose to make several seams. I'm just going to do one 7mm from the top using the width of my presser foot as guide. You fully extend the waistline and you keep pulling while sewing on top. There we go. And I didn't touch this part here. It's still open. Um, it doesn't matter, I think. And that's it. The pants are done. I really hoped you liked them. If you make them and share the results on social, please tag me and use this hashtag. Take care and see you soon for a new sewing project. Kiss.